I love wrestling, and contrary to the lies that Jack the Jobber will tell you, I've been watching for over 16 years. However, liking wrestling isn't really as cool as it used to be. On the scale of social acceptability, wrestling fans rank just above professional pickup artists and just below amateur furries. In my social circle, which looks like the OC, only malnourished and pale and after some botched surgery, I'm the only wrestling fan, and I found myself making some terrible excuses over the years for why I kept watching it. Ultimately, no one should ever make excuses for liking wrestling. After all, it's compelling both on camera and behind the scenes, so, you know, go f*** yourself, haters. However, in my years as a fan, I've either used these or heard these used, and they're all, to a man, weak source. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are seven terrible excuses adults use to justify watching wrestling. Number seven, it's predetermined, not fake. Let's start with an absolute classic. Non-wrestling fans still, still, in 2016, love nothing more than ridiculing wrestling because it's fake. The following things are fake. The West Wing, all theater. The Shawshank Redemption, all opera. Mars Attacks. However, despite this, wrestling fans lower themselves to the trolls' level, responding, it's not fake, it's predetermined. Nah, it's fake. Wrestling presents itself as a legitimate sport for the purposes of storytelling, and in that regard, all the expert panels, all the refereeing, all the rules, everything, it's fake. Now, I know why people use the predetermined argument, because the physical strain is real, and so is the training, but the argument simply doesn't need to progress beyond, yes, it's fake, so is most art created by man, and so is my interest in you as a person. And speaking of the whole violence is real thing, number six, people put their lives on the line for it. People have died in the ring. People put their lives, their careers, their necks, their backs, their spines on the line for our entertainment. So go a lot of defenders of wrestling trying to elevate the art form by how dangerous it is. And I mean, hey, while wrestling fans certainly respect the willingness to risk their lives that wrestlers have, to non-fans that justification is like me saying, I taste test dog food for a living. But honestly, I'm not wasting my life because one in every five thousand cans could be poisonous which is not to demean wrestling in any way just that it being dangerous won't make it seem more worthy and less silly to a non-fan in fact it's more often the opposite Number five, Stone Cold still shows up sometimes. A huge amount of people from my generation watched wrestling because of the Attitude Era and the shenanigans of Austin and The Rock. That was the glory time when wrestling was officially cool. Uh, I mean, not cool, but you wouldn't be spat out in the street for wearing an Austin 316 shirt. Nowadays, most of the child fans from that time have stopped watching, and when they dismiss wrestling as adults, people are quick to point out that, oh no, but The Rock comes back sometimes. Look, here he is with a stupid flamethrower. Or Hulk Hogan still, oh. Or, hey look, old Stone Cold Steve Austin. Lionizing the past just appears desperate to outsiders like we're still clinging to our childhood. It's always fun to see Steve Austin, but championing wrestling's past over wrestling's present only serves to confirm to everyone who gave up the WWE in the early to mid 2000s that they made the right choice. Number four, just watch this one match. Don't do it. Don't show a friend who doesn't like wrestling your favorite match. It will break your heart. I have a bunch of favorite matches. HBK vs Undertaker at Mania 25, Angle vs Lesnar Iron Man, Steamboat vs Flair 2 out of 3 falls, and none of them worked. None of them. Matches that reduced me to a happy jellyfish left my friends cold, and that made me sad in a fundamental way. A non-wrestling fan will almost definitely not grow to like wrestling just because they're sat in front of a great match, because they can't watch it neutrally. They haven't bought into it, they don't know the characters, and they'll be picking out all the small errors and logical inconsistencies. Your friends just won't care and then you'll hate them. Some part of you will hate them forever, and then you'll do a bad thing like drive a car into the church hall during their wedding. I mean, what? Number three, it's family friendly. What do you mean you don't like wrestling? Children love it. Now it's true in a lot of ways, the sanitized, safe for kiddies WWE is better than its TV 14 equivalent. There are no more god awful bra and panties matches that make your parents deeply ashamed of you. There's no more casual racism there is less casual racism and there's fewer sights of men with their faces sliced open with razor blades. But to most non-fans, that won't matter because to them wrestling is still A, violent, B, dumb, and C, both. And the fact that's now marketed directly to children makes it either an even bigger waste of time because kiddie stuff ain't good, or even more of a weird hypocrisy that men are powerbombing each other through tables for the little ones. Number two, WWE do a lot of charity work. It's true, the WWE have become a force for good in this world. Far from being the concussion-spewing, steroid-encouraging, hepatitis-spreading machine that it has been alleged as being, the modern WWE has created a number of charitable foundations, campaigns, and forged many charitable partnerships. Be a star, superstars for kids, many more all receive support, as does the Special Olympics, muscular dystrophy charities, and that's not even taken into account John Cena's Make-A-Wish record. The man has granted 500 wishes to sick children. That is an astonishing 
voting number. The second most is Justin Bieber, and it is not even close. Like, he's granted over 250 more than him. Cena is a dream-granting machine. But, harsh as it sounds, that only makes WWE as a company good. It makes John Cena good. It doesn't make wrestling good. After all, no matter how much of his paycheck Adam Sandler might donate to charity, it doesn't make his movies any better, and Vince Gilligan could steal money from the blind and Breaking Bad would still be amazing. And number one, it's a guilty pleasure. Nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Pack that in. Put simply, in terms of the TV you watch, there is no such thing as a guilty pleasure. There are programs you like and programs you don't like. Watching wrestling hurts nobody, and your enjoyment of it is nobody's business but your own. For years, I called wrestling my guilty pleasure, but all that did was qualify every great match that creatives strove to book, that talent worked tirelessly to execute, and that promotions like WWE spent countless man hours to light, shoot, and edit as somehow inherently bad. Looking back, it's pretty damn disrespectful. WWE and much of wrestling Wrestling is often dumb, often frustrating, and often regressive in terms of social politics, but if I stopped loving it, I'd stop watching it, and that's the entirety of the argument. It doesn't matter that it's fake, it doesn't matter that a lot of my friends don't like it, wrestling's past and wrestling's future, they don't matter either. Do I still enjoy it? Somehow, yes. Does that make me feel even the slightest bit of guilt? No. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.